Issues of quality and standards permeate every aspect of our lives today. The vehicles we drive, the roads they are driven on, the gadgets we use, and the foods we eat are all manufactured or produced according to one standard or the other. These standards have been developed over the years to ensure fitness for purpose in the case of products and good practice in the case of processes or services. Quality infrastructure has to do with the conformity of products. It's a system with which you can, uh, of kind of services and uh, legal elements which help you to establish the conformity of a product with the specifications or with legal requirements that are set for reasons of safety and health protection. But quality infrastructure is not only playing a role in the um, relationship from uh, say consumers to, to government but also among companies themselves because they are also very much interested in the question do I get what I have ordered? Is the product that I have received or the, the assembly that I need in order to, to put it into a bigger product, is that really, at, at, is that really what, I, what I wanted to have? Besides, the existence of quality and standards enables and facilitates trade and promotes technological advancement throughout the world. Standards also enable interoperability. This means that, for example, different components of a machine, though produced by different manufacturers, fit together and work as a unit because they have been manufactured to agreed standards. Standards are basically voluntary and they are set by industries and technical bodies in specific sectors. However, governments have also discovered the advantages of using standards in legislation. They are concerned with protection of the health of the population or the safety of consumers or our environment or want to ensure that trade is conducted on a fair basis. Some standards have become mandatory as part of technical regulations for products. For example, in Ghana, manufacturers of table salt are required to fortify it with iodine. Also, for the sake of energy efficiency and our environment, only certain electrical bulbs, refrigerators and air conditioners can be manufactured or imported into the country. When we talk about quality, there are three main issues that must be addressed. These are metrology, standardization, and conformity assessment. Metrology is all about measurements, example length, weight, volume, pressure, temperature. Measurements must be to the highest degree of accuracy. If you cannot properly measure, you cannot make anything. So if you are um, dealing with, uh, say, uh, electronics industry, you need to be able to measure on sub-micron level, which is a thousands, is a thousands of a millimeter. So you have to have a measurement system in your country that can accommodate to that. When you're buying something in a shop and you buy it by the kilo, is the weighing scale that you are using, is it correct? Does it really weigh a kilo? Or if you buy petrol and you buy 20 liters of petrol, did you get, really get 20 liters of petrol and not 19? So we have three types of metrology 
we have the scientific metrology, legal metrology, industrial metrology. Scientific metrology gives traceability to industrial and legal. Traceability here means we calibrate their working standards for them so they can also go and work for clients. In addition to that, scientific metrology will have to establish national standards for a particular country. Then we have legal metrology. Legal metrology deals with legal instruments. Here, there are instruments that are used to provide service directly to the consumer in exchange of money. So, for example, you go to the filling station, you pay money, you are served with petrol, diesel or kerosene through a fuel dispensing pump. So the fuel dispensing pump is a legal instrument. You go to the butcher shop, you want to buy meat, they use a scale. That scale is a legal instrument. For industrial metrology, it deals with the instruments that are used for measurement in a particular factory, either in the laboratory or on the production floor. So there can be pressure gauges, thermometers, density meters, thermohygrometers, I mean, a host of glassware. You can mention several of them. So metrology has a great influence or impact on consumers. One, you can look at for example, in Ghana, uh, our leading export is cocoa. The cocoa has to be weighed before cocoa board or the licensed buying companies buy from the farmers. So the cocoa has to be weighed. And they also have to determine the moisture content. And these ones, you need a moisture meter to determine the moisture content. And all these are measuring instruments. And if we don't follow the rules and we send cocoa to our buyers in, in Europe or in Asia like Japan, it will be rejected. All measuring instruments in industries or laboratories must be traceable to the world measurement standards. A bag of cocoa should give the same weight whether it is weighed in Accra or Amsterdam. The temperature of a cold room at the thermoport should be the same as the required temperature specified by an importer in Antwerp, Belgium. Is this cold room regularly calibrated? Can the importer trust the competence of the calibrating institute? That is, is it accredited? Then there is standardization. The standards are there to to specify and to define what, what, what you have, have to do. Standards are developed by industries through consensus and collaboration. However, sometimes there are conflicts between trading partners on the interpretation of a standard or a company wants to know whether it has correctly applied a standard. We go back to the concept of quality. What are the minimum requirements? Um, these requirements have to be controlled. You cannot set up a standard with the characteristic that you are not in the position to verify. So we, can we have to limit the standard characteristic to those aspects that we can control and verify. In such cases, they can ask an independent third party to come in to perform testing or inspection or other control measures and make an assessment if a product, service or process is in conformity with the standard. That is why testing laboratories, inspection bodies and certification bodies are called conformity assessment bodies. So as a result of the integration and coordination of a series of activities in several interrelated subjects like standardization, metrology, testing, inspection, certification and accreditation, we may achieve quality. This complex of activities may be referred to as quality infrastructure system. The purpose of this concept in the search for quality is to follow a logical process starting with standards, measurements 
and up to conformity assessment and certification of products or services. Certification can take the form of a quality seal or mark, which is a guarantee to the consumer or the market that the specifications declared by a producer are in compliance with a given standard. All good conformity assessment bodies are under the control of an accreditation body, an independent authority that performs audits on laboratories and on inspection and certification bodies to guarantee the quality and trustworthiness of tests and certificates. There are national, regional and international organizations within the quality infrastructure. One such organization is the ISO, the International Standards Organization. Also, there is the IEC, the International Electrochemical Commission, and also regional bodies such as ASO, the African Regional Standards Organization, and national bodies like Ghana Standards Authority. Quality standards are not just about products and services, but also about the processes that deliver a particular product or service. This brings us to quality management systems. Application of quality management systems ensures that the company can continuously produce the product to the required standard every time. This then assures consumers that they were getting the same standard and the same quality any time they make a purchase. There is certification for quality management systems. In the food sector, the popular certification is the HACCP that ensures the safety of the food produced. In the fresh agriculture produce sector, one can talk of global gap and fair trade, which are private production standards in high demand in the European market. And then in the manufacturing sector, we have the ISO 9000 or ISO 18000 for the organization of health and safety in factories or on construction sites. To conclude, the point should be made that quality infrastructure is not simple business. It consists of an elaborate network of interdependencies between levels of technical and legal expertise to fulfill their functions. Producers and consumers daily make use of its components without always being aware of it. Especially for developing countries, applying standards that have been developed internationally brings them to a, the state of technology, the, the most current state of technology. Because a standard is, a, is an agreement between people in an industry about what is current and uh, going uh, st state of technology. If you can follow the technology prescribed in standards, you will make serious advancements in, 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 your, in your, your industrial development. A quality infrastructure that is up to international standards has many advantages. It is essential for overcoming technical barriers to trade. It is key to the integration of countries into the international trade system and also enables countries to take advantage of globalization. It is for this reason that the European Union is supporting the Ghana government to carry out the trade-related assistance and quality enabling program track. The track program aims at instituting modern, up-to-date quality infrastructure in Ghana that would ensure that products produced in Ghana can meet international requirements so that the country can take full advantage of international trade opportunities. Moreover, quality and standards are not for only export destinations. Each and every citizen of the country deserves better quality products and services. Better quality products in the country can only result in a healthy and prosperous nation.